Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a histogram from raw data in Microsoft Excel. Over here you'll see in this column A I have uh, 30 data values entered. Uh, these are quiz scores from a quiz that was out of 20 points. So the values that you could, the scores, the possible scores are any whole numbers ranging from 0 to 20. Okay, so to, the first thing you do to create a um, table is select your data column. First let me go back to the, the home tab of the ribbon. Okay, so first I want to select my data. So I click there and I scroll down and then hold the shift key and click in the bottom right corner of the data table that I want to create a histogram of. Okay, so now I've selected the data. I go to insert and um, I'm going to go to the statistical charts drop down in the insert ribbon and I'm going to select the first one, the histogram. The, uh, the next one is a Pareto histogram which is a descending histogram. Let's just do a regular histogram though. Okay and there we go. Um, I can change the title here to maybe something like quiz scores and <clears throat> uh, Excel will do its own binning for you, binning of your data. So notice in this column, uh, let me just select this one column. So I have this bar in my histogram represents all the scores between 12 and 18, not including the, the students who scored a 12. And we can see that there's 16 uh, data points in this represented by this bar of the histogram. But this is kind of um, not exactly very fine binning or very fine classes of my data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the data and right click or on a Mac control click to bring up this format data series. It's the choice at the bottom of that menu. <clears throat> okay, and you'll see it brings me to this tab of the format panel. And what I want to do is change the binning from auto to, I could change to bin width or number of bins. Uh, so for example, bin width, I could do bins that are, well, one unit wide. And then when I hit enter, you'll see yeah, there we go. I get all my data is binned. So each bar in my histogram now represents a single grade on the quiz, a single possible grade. So as we see here, um, two students got zero, scored zero. There were four students who scored a 17. The mode of the data is in 18, there were, let's see, eight students who scored 18 on the quiz, four who scored 19, and there were six students who scored a perfect score of 20 out of 20 on the quiz. Okay, so there we go. Um, we could also, if I collect, uh, select all the data again, I could I could bin it some other way. Maybe we want bins of width two. <clears throat> and so this gives me this gives me a pretty reasonable histogram as well. Um, it's just again, this is kind of a an art binning your data in histograms. It's there's no right or wrong answer, but you do want to be you want to bin your data. Uh, in narrow enough columns so that you're not leaving out important features, perhaps, of your data. Okay, uh, another way you could do this is you could just specify the number of bins. So since I have 20 possible scores on this quiz, I'll just 
bin it into 20 bins and and then it does it this way. Um, so that's another good way to bin your data. Um, another cool thing is you can come up here um, and switch to a design that has, let's see here, Let's see, um, some of the choices, okay, I think this one, yeah, like this one has numbers at the top of the bars, which is kind of helpful. Um, of course, this does get rid of the, yeah, I think I want to keep uh, my vertical axis labels there, and now I have numbers as well, okay. Um, one final thing, I would like to label my vertical axis. So I come over here to add chart element. And let's see, axis titles. I want to title the primary vertical axis. So I put that there and I select that. And let's change this to frequency. There we go. Okay, so now I have a histogram of the quiz scores and I think that's pretty good. Now how can I use this? Well I could if I have a Word document open I could drag this to a Word document to put it into a Word document. Um, of course I could just create a document in a, uh, a spreadsheet. It's perfectly fine as well. You can do things to get rid of all the columns and stuff and you can create a document in a spreadsheet. Uh, what else could you do? Um, you can, let's see, you can control or right click on the actual histogram itself and save it as a picture. Um, so I could save it as oh, a, a PNG file, a JPEG, a PDF, a GIF file, or a, a bitmap. So it gives you several options there. If you want to save it for inclusion into say like an HTML document, that would be a good choice. Um, and the other thing is we could, um, let's see, you could always just do something like select, select the histogram and then do control C or on a Mac like I'm on command C to copy it and then go to a Word document and paste it in that way. So. There's lots of ways to take this diagram and import it into some other kind of document. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you and best of luck.